Okay, next thing on the agenda is Dorothy Frazier. Hi, Dorothy, welcome. Hello. And what we're trying to do is have an autism work to raise money for hyperbaric chamber that the parents can share and rotate to treat autism. And in your packet, you'll see um, the autism, there's 1.5 million autistic individuals in the United States. It grows by 16% every year, and in the last decade, 172%. Lincoln County has the treatment. We have a day program for adults, but nothing for our kids. What services we get are from the school, or if you're lucky, you're on the waiting list. So we as parents really get together and get us the treatment here. Um, her daughter has lost her hearing and her eyesight because of the form of autism that she has. With treatment, she can regain some of that bad. The only place that we can go to get treatment is in Bathley. So we travel three times a week with my son to get treatments. But Brittany cannot travel. So our goal is to raise $30,000 here in the county, get a supportable chamber. We can rotate between all of the parents. The doctor who treats my son is willing to come here once a month and do a program for our kids. So we're not traveling to other states to get treatment that we could have here. $30,000 is not a lot of money compared to 10% of your workforce in 10 years not be able to work. We'll have to support those or we'll be enough caregivers. So we're asking for any help that you guys can provide us. What do you think there are <coughs> sources in the county that we can work with? Uh, I mean, are the medical providing areas? Or well, we looked at this treatment for my son. The pediatrician and I called every hospital and wound center in Cabell, Putnam, and Canola counties. Nobody would use their chamber for autism. It's not something that is widespread in West Virginia, but Ohio, Florida, and Wisconsin are leading the United States in the treatment of hyperbaric chambers. And hyperbaric will treat all the coexisting disorders that go with autism. Seizures, stroke, hearing loss, vision, um, sensory disorders. The only place in West Virginia is in Bakley, so our kids are missing out. We have to travel three hours every time we go. So if we're able to help and get to 30000 and we purchase the chamber, then just look at the pictures, mm -hmm. is it sort of portable? Or? That is a portable chamber. Um, the chamber itself weighs 45 pounds. The interior structure are um, like piping. It can be dismantled and moved between the families. The heaviest part of the equipment is the concentrator, and it's the most expensive piece of equipment. The chamber itself is not $5,000. It's the concentrator that does the oxygen. The oxygen the chamber needs is above room temperature, and that concentrator and the tubing for it is the most important piece. And it is very portable. How many children do we have in Lincoln County that we've been I know of uh, 25 from Ranger to Hearts. On the other end of the county, I don't know. I know of three in Hamlin. There are a lot of parents in Hearts Creek alone who are, they have, they have this mentality that they're to be ashamed and they don't tell people how sick their children are. Right. And you guys know me, I don't care. <coughs> My son's going to get treatment. I don't care who knows. Well, I mean, that's a, what it should be. I mean, our kids are taking this. Right. I'm just yeah you know, thinking about we can make this happen some way. I mean, then we like you say the doctor could be here one day out of the month. She's willing to come one day out of the month. So and our spend the whole day and then you take mm -hmm. would we have would we have her taking equipment or somebody else helping her? No, take we can it? actually house the equipment here. Um, it doesn't run on any more than a plug-in. The equipment can be housed here at each individual's house. She can assess each child do the recommended treatments for that child, and teach them how to use the chamber. The chamber has a remote access from the inside, so a parent can go in with the child like I do and run the chamber themselves from inside. The treatment is an hour and a half every day, twice a day, for 40 treatments. In ideal conditions, it's every day. So I can't do every day. Okay, I, I have a little better understanding of it. So we're talking about once we get people trained and know how to operate, know that, then on a daily basis, mm -hmm. it could be running somewhere or doing some good. Yes. Okay. And I, 
my son has been doing it for two months now, or almost two months. His speech is picked up, he's able to concentrate. We sleep at night now, he's starting to eat better, he's recognizing people, he, he can't do crowds yet, but he's getting better. He made it through the front door. And it works. Uh, I'm here to tell you, it works. He's able to go to school. Yes, he's even able to go to school this year. If we had a chamber here, would he use it more often than just three days? Yes. The recommended treatment will be every day for 40 consecutive treatments. And then you, you um, go off for a month, and then you can start back. And you would do less treatments each time. And the goal is to wean them to where they don't need anything more than a booster one week out of the year. So they can mature to a point. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I've never had never heard of the treatment. I mean, I In just your packet, there of. is the initial study by Dr. Rosenthal, who started this treatment for autism and how the chamber works. The neurons in the autistic brain idle. They, they don't make the synapses or connect. The oxygen forces that connection. And over time, it keeps that connection going. So he could be. In, in a good case, it's a fully functional adult if the treatments are consistent. But like most parents, I have to work, so it, you can't do everything. Well, both your parents and others, I, you know, be commended is to step up for your kids. They can't speak for themselves. But if we don't, nobody else will. And that's why we're here. We want, we want to do this in our county for our kids. Well, give us a little, just a little time to work on it. We will do something to help. I, I don't know what, and Thomas and I will certainly take it to heart and talk about it and see what we can do. We appreciate anything you else can do. And then I'm going to hand this to the newspaper guy. We have one for you, Mr. Ramsey. What are these pictures for? I think it might, we might, you know, in order to make awareness, I know the paper will certainly give you credit and help. Uh, you know, uh, what you all are taking is, is, is a countywide effort, and uh, we need countywide support. And, uh, We're hoping to do that with this autism law. We're sending out flyers and letters all over the county. So maybe we could put something out here where we have a bulletin board or something. This county doesn't have the best resources as far as getting information out. So we're using the school system. And the uh, autism <coughs> educator over at the Board of Education is helping us. So all the schools will know and be able to participate and identify children that aren't, aren't diagnosed yet. And before we leave here this evening, I'm going to impose, uh, if it's all right with you, that anyone in the audience that has an extra dollar on them, let's, let's put that forward in the way of a donation to help these people. I have a sponsorship just for that. I, and my wife gave me an allowance, and I'm just going to spend it all season. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's right. So. Uh, I'll buy wallets and the car, but you know how to get a hold of them. Yeah. Here's Mr. Wittell. Do you know anybody that will partner with the county commission to make this happen? The Lincoln County Parks and Recreation are allowing us to go to the end of the non conference right now. I'm going to pass my hand around for y'all. I'll ask several. They want to get names, too. Yes, we'd like to be able to thank everybody. They want to get names. We can get the names, I guess. <laughs> Thank you.